<laughs> oh yeah. Alright guys, I got the KFX 450R pulled up. Check it out. Nice and clean. I got it sitting on the Tusk stand. That is a pretty legit stand. It can raise and lower the machine too, so we'll be using that. And I got a whole shit ton of boxes here. So we're going to be leapfrogging past the 400EX and the Project Grape Ape, the YZ125-144 simply to do the KFX 450R because I'm going to be going to Little Sahara Sand Dunes at the end of the month. It's about three weeks away. And the uh, last thing we want is for this bike not to be ready. This is going to be my backup bike. And it's a very enjoyable bike to ride. It's got Rocket Run suspension on it. Uh, it's got a stabilizer and just some, uh, some goodies on it that just make it comfy to ride, which I know that's not what <laughs> riding is all about. But when you're, I'm going out there for like a week and I want to have something that I can enjoy riding. And the last time we used this was when we put it up against the 416EX, I think it was. And I mean, it's just uh, basically a stock 450. It's got a high compression piston and it had a slip on exhaust. That's pretty much it. And it's pretty mellow. It just handles great. It's got a steering stem and all, feels great. And I really just want to make the power to match. So I've got a pile of stuff here. I haven't done an unboxing video in quite some time. So we're going to get to it uh, under here. I've got some cool stuff in here. I got something even cooler. And this is Bunker Industries. It's a light bar. Uh, that might not look that cool on this machine. <laughs> in fact, it's probably going to look kind of weird. But the last time I went to the sand dunes, there were people doing night riding. And I was so jealous because the machines that we had out there did not have any lights on them. So like, dude, I want to go out riding at night so bad. So that light bar will enable me to do that. I just... I really, really want to do some night riding. I think that'll be cool. So let's check it out. Let's, let's see what's in these boxes. All right, unboxing videos. Everybody loves unboxing videos, right? Right. Some people make a living off of unboxing videos, like phone reviews and stuff. It's kind of crazy, but I mean, I like to see things being open too. So we'll start with the hot cams, only because this is really self-explanatory. Uh, I don't even really have to do much with these. They're bagged up in sandwich bags because I had already installed them on the KFX. Like I said, I just couldn't get it tuned in time and. So I st stuck them aside for a day like today where we're going to be modifying the machine so that it's gonna work with those things. The hot cams are gonna wake this thing up big time. Then we have this uh, steel plate, another kind of self-explanatory, nothing crazy here. Um, I also have uh, genuine Kawasaki clamps and boot. This is for a KFX 450 dirt bike. Uh, supposedly this will bolt right up to the cylinder head on the KFX 450R and it will enable me to use an FCR style carburetor. Should be a direct swap. Well, not really direct, but as direct as we can possibly make it. And then we've got a Yamaha fuel pet cock. You can get these super cheap, like knockoff ones on eBay for like 10 bucks, even even cheaper. I've seen 10 bucks for two of them. Uh, but I noticed that the, the all of the, like, the orifices and stuff are kind of smaller, so they're not going to flow as fast. So I just wanted to go genuine. These are still pretty cheap. I think these are like 20 bucks, 22 bucks shipped. I got it from RockyMountainATV.com. This is... My FCR style carburetor. Uh, this is not a genuine carb. This is an Amazon carb. I'm comfortable running this because I ran this on the Predator, this exact carb, and it ran really well. So I'm not afraid to use these things. I use genuine jets in them. Uh, uh, obviously inspect it and everything. And I'm going to be converting the lines. I have some lime green lines from AP3 Racing just to make it match the quad and make it look trick. All right, now let's move on to the Bunker Industries could put this on your doomsday bunker. I haven't really seen what this looks like just yet. Came with a wiring harness. It was pretty cheap. I think it was like 35 bucks. I've had really good um, luck. If you guys watch the Maverick project, put uh, Amazon light bars on that and like side light bars, rear light bars, and they were super bright. I went through tons of water and stuff with them. I couldn't be happier with them. So I'm it was kind of confident in use, going with this. This one had really good reviews. It said that this was like super bright. It had, I forget what the output was, like 300 watts or something. Uh, but what I liked about this, oh God, that's never a good sound. Oh, okay. <laughs> there's, uh, there's some nuts in the rails. I guess that's for a mount. I was like, dude, come on. But actually, it's kind of heavy. Sometimes if you get aftermarket lights and light bars, they're super light and they feel chintzy. Uh, this one was supposed to have a really high output and it had these side kind of kicker lights that shoot out to the side. So without getting a huge light bar, this is, this is 12 inches. So without getting a huge light bar, this should provide a, like a lot of light, believe it or not. I mean, if you haven't had a, had a light bar before, 
You wouldn't believe how much light these things put out. All right, now let's get to the good stuff. I accidentally opened this without you guys, but I didn't pull it out, so we're still experiencing this together. So uh, some of you guys probably already know what this is. This is a new high flow air box and intake kit from Fuel Customs. Look at that. Yeah, so this comes with an aftermarket air box and everything. These are pretty pricey. They're like $300. Wow. Wonder if it's a genuine K. Oh, Fuel Customs. It's actually their own brand. Wow. Look at that. That is custom. Fuel Custom. And then the intake tube or mug, whichever you prefer. I opted for the lime green version because it's a Kawasaki. Why wouldn't I? All right, now here is the one that I have been dying to open. I waited for you guys. I have been waiting over six months for this thing. This is exciting. Wait till you guys see what's in here. I just can't wait to see this thing. Oh my God, it's so cool, it's paper. What do you guys think? the welds damn look at the billet tip <whistles> Rossier engineering r4 these things have been on back order for so long and I finally got my hands on one dude the, the size of this exhaust is huge this is exactly what I wanted for that stage 3 cam Wow, dude, the welds on this are really nice. And look at the inside. There's barely a seam. You can barely feel it, so we're gonna have really good flow. So there's one other thing that I wanna do, and that is I want to port the head. That's kind of been my new thing. So I'm gonna pop that off and port the head before we put the cams in there. And otherwise, I think that's gonna be it. My goal is to finish this in a relatively short amount of time. I'm thinking like two days. <laughs> um, I mean, realistically, it's probably like a half a day's work, maybe a full day work, especially with the tuning of the carburetor because that's gonna be, you know, seeing what works for that and all. Uh, but when you add filming into the mix, that always adds time. So I'm gonna see if I can just get this thing knocked out. I just wanna get this thing done. So yeah, I'm gonna hop on this and pull the head off. Let's get to it. guys check it out here is our head ready to rock and roll i ported this thing you can see the valve guides i shaved down made them nice and smooth very very smooth in here i feel like it's hard to appreciate porting without being able to actually feel how smooth it is here's the intake side opened it up a bit made it really nice and smooth got rid of all the casting marks and whatnot all of the ridges from our valve seats completely gone exhaust side would have liked to have been able to polish that a little bit more, but it was really difficult getting in there. Uh, but it is way smoother than before. Um, I opened it up quite a bit and I also matched this outer diameter to the header. So it'll be a nice transition there. Same thing with the valve seats on the exhaust side, took the valves, put some valve grinding compound on there. So we'll, we have no, we'll have no leaks with our valves. And I also surfaced this and just cleaned any carbon and stuff off. And the intake boot, I popped on here and made sure the inner diameters match for that as well. And of course, I tagged it. Got to leave my mark. So we're going to go ahead, put the valves in this thing, uh, install it up with those stage three cams. And uh, this is probably the hardest and most time consuming part. Then we'll get onto the exhaust and the intake and that LED headlight.
All right, so I got the head on there, all nice and ported by yours truly. And I got the stage three cams in there. I know I didn't show too much details. Uh, made sure that it was uh, shimmed properly, got everything in time. So we should be good to go as far as mechanical stuff. So I also took the carb, put some AP3 lines on here. Just makes a carburetor look that much better. Got the uh, ice blue and the green carb lines on there. That should match this build really nicely. I uh, got my old throttle line right here. I had to straighten this out because it had a bend in it. Leaving the head stays off until I'm done because it's going to be really tight getting that carburetor in here. I already unbolted some of these mounts and stuff here. A lot of these plugs and stuff can be abandoned. I'm going to leave them attached though until I get everything sorted out. So probably for now, they'll just be kind of bundled up there. See if I can get the carb fit in there. I did put it in there. Uh, the distance, like the width of the carb from inlet to uh, outlet, is the exact same width as the throttle body. So it should fit in there in theory. It should fit direct swap. <laughs> it's always in theory though. So I'm going to go ahead, get the, um, the carb mounted up, get the FCI uh, airbox and filter and all that stuff mounted up. And then we'll put the Rossi air exhaust on. Uh, and then the last thing to do is to take off the fuel pump and put a regular fuel pet cock and we should be rocking and rolling. I got the carb on there. It actually fits like without any modifications. It all fits in there. These brackets still fit. I mean, it's very close. Plus, if you delete all a bunch of this stuff that we don't need, it would clean it up a little bit, but everything fits. The throttle cable goes right in there. Got really nice throttle function, full range of motion with the thumb throttle. No uh, weird blockages or like any kind of passageways that I had to cut or anything. It's almost like Kawasaki was saying that you're supposed to put a carburetor on this. Hopefully it performs as well as it fits on there. Um, you can see I got my boot right here. That's my OEM boot that ends right about here. That's where the uh, air box would go. So I think it's gonna be pretty simple. Here's our main tube. You have to put your mass airflow sensor in there. That's the OEM ma mass airflow sensor. I put some clear silicone on there. I don't know if you guys can see, cause I didn't really like the way that it was sitting. I felt like there was a gap there and I don't want it to leak. So I silicone that and then we'll take our air box. This is from Fuel Customs. This is not the OEM air box. And this literally just drops in place. Lines up with these holes, one, two, three, four. And then we'll put that green tube in there, the filter, uh, hook up our crank vent line right here. There's an extension that comes with the kit. So this will go over here. And then this end will connect to the line coming out of the crank. And then of course you just have to plug in your mass airflow sensor and that's it. All right, now in theory, this should go together with ease, but theory and practice are always two different things. Get our tube down here. Not too bad. Everything looks to line up perfectly. Tighten our box in place. Put a little bit of blue Loctite on these. Actually, that's a little chintzy. I think I'm gonna shave these so they match the contour of the plastic. Cleaned them up with a die grinder a little bit. Easy fix. Solid. Put this K&N style filter in, spray a little K&N oil on it. I guess you got to put the filter on and then have the clamp on the back side. Right, so the carb is 100% installed. Air box is on there. Got the mass airflow sensor hooked up all really easy and straightforward. Made it our two lines right here for the crankcase vent. And uh, I'm going to have to give the carb conversion a hell to the yeah for fitment, man, because really, I mean, look, your choke is right here. You got, I mean, everything is really easily accessible. The idle screw is right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. Uh, you can get it if you, I can't do it because I'm holding this right now, but if you do two fingers, you can get around the motor mount and get it. Or if you look through this little hole here, you can get a flathead right through this hole and adjust it that way. I mean, it is really great fitment uh, for being aftermarket. It's kind of hard to believe. Box is really solid. I'd say that's even better than OEM. There's one thing I did want to point out. Uh, the back of this box is open if you have aftermarket fenders, I don't know if it's all of them, but I had Meyer fenders, maybe they were old school or whatever, but the little bucket here wasn't there. So you would be open in the back, just, just a heads up. 
if you're going to get this um, this modification, the back would be open. I mean, you could probably put like a panel on it or something, make it a little more effective. But I just wanted to mention that. And I think the craziest thing is, I bet you I can get in here and change my main jet without even move, removing the car. This wire can move over. There's plenty of space down here to pull that off and get the main jet out to switch it out. So that is super held to the yeah. I hate taking off carburetors to do jetting. If we can do it while it's in there, that is freaking awesome. Now there's one last thing we have to do to do the carb conversion, and that is uh, take the fuel pump off and put a regular fuel petcock on. Before we do that, let's put on this Rossier exhaust. I just can't wait any longer. I wanna see what it looks like on the quad. All right, so the last thing that we have to do for our carb swap is to take off the fuel pump. So the fuel pump is inside the gas tank. It's actually pretty heavy. This is a pretty heavy unit here. Uh, so what we're gonna do is pop that plate off. I have this piece of round steel right here. It's about the same size. I ordered this on eBay. You can get steel in all different types of cuts. So this will be perfect. Let me go ahead and pop this off. There is our fuel pump. You actually could use this. If you cut this stuff off, you could probably weld this hole or plug it and then put the, you know, you take all this stuff off up here and then put your pet cock in this. But I'm pretty sure I can sell this on eBay and get some of my money back. So that's why I got the plate. The plate was only like four bucks. Just for shits and giggles, let's see how much weight we're actually saving here. Got, oh, got a little bit of gas in there. Got 1.56, probably a little bit of gas, but I don't really think that's gonna make too much of a difference. And then, Take these, put them on here, 0.764. So about three quarters of a pound we're saving. All right, now what I'm gonna do is make a template for our steel so that we can you know, match up our holes here. Should be pretty easy. Uh, what I will do is take this piece of paper, fold it in half, take our steel plate, get it about halfway on there, trace that, and then I'll take this cylinder that's about the size of the fuel pump and put that about in the middle. Now I'll just cut these out. So now we've got this circle right here. This will be our template. This will fit over our fuel pump. We'll tape this in place. And now that we've got our template in place, I'm just gonna go around and mark our holes. All right, template is made. Now we can take our template and stick it onto our steel plate. It should have about the same outer diameter as this plate as we measured right off of it. Now I'll take a punch. All right, done with the template. So there we go, holes are marked. Now we just gotta drill this thing out. And before I drill those holes, I wanna mark where we're gonna drill for the fuel petcock. So I'm gonna put the gas tank in place and kinda see how I can put this fuel petcock that it will, one, I don't want it directing, the OEM one goes out to the side like this, but I'd like to be able to see the gauge. So if I can put it like this or something, I don't want it to interfere with the fan either though. It's maybe like right like that, angled just slightly so you can still get to it and the fuel line will come out to the side like that. So here's our plate and our template actually worked perfectly, but I made a rookie mistake. I'll show you guys, you see all the holes lined up perfectly, but <laughs> here's the mistake. So I figured that these were all spaced, you know, equally, but they're not. Check this out. So it's perfect right there, right? But if we roll this to the next hole, you can see the top three line up, but these don't line up. And uh, there's really only one configuration that it fits in. Even flipping it uh, doesn't work. It has to be this one way. And it's not where I wanted the fuel pet cock to be. So where I wanted it to be was right here. So it's not the end of the world. Uh, these top three holes are pretty much matched up. And I'm just going to have to elongate these holes a little bit. Uh, it's not going to matter for leaking or anything because this has a big O-ring in here. As long as we're sealed around here, we'll be good to go. So I'm just going to go ahead and elongate those holes. 
uh, get the petcock fitted on there and paint this thing and then we'll be good to go. All right, that wasn't too bad. Took about five minutes to fix. Positive side effect of that is that now this can be fit in multiple orientations. I was playing around with it. It lines up uh, in a bunch of different orientations. So that way, if I do decide that I wanna spin and move the uh, fuel petcock, we'll be good to go. So I'm gonna wipe this thing down with lacquer thinner. That'll clean it up. Or hold it with scotch right first, uh, just to scuff it a little bit more than it already is. Wipe it with lacquer thinner, and then just give this a quick uh, coat of flat black. And I think on the other side, I'm gonna put a little bit of gas resistant RTV, because I think the paint would actually get eaten up by the gasoline. I'm not 100% sure, but I know the gas resistant RTV will be good. And I wanna seal up the back side of our fuel petcock anyways. All right, well, our new tank plate is uh, drying. What I'm gonna do is go ahead Get our bunker headlight on, our LED. Wow, dude, really? Got our wires here, the light bar is there, obviously. And uh, got these little mounts here. I'm gonna try mounting it up to the handlebar. I'm gonna see if I can get it up here. Kind of make it look like, uh, I feel like it'll look like one of those old scramblers. Scrambler 400, where they have those big box lights up on top. We'll see. Oh, look at that. I did it without you guys. It actually, I don't know, man. I think that kind of looks like a scrambler. You guys know what I'm talking about? With the fenders, I'm sure it's going to look better. I had these two cheap mounts that I put on the handlebars. It's actually quite tight. It's all wired up. It's connected directly to the battery. If I can find the switch here, here it is. Oh, oh my God. Oh, I can't see anything. Oh. But if you're behind it, you can see everything. So we'll play with that later on uh, when it's dark out and see how effective it really is. All right guys, check it out. I waited till it was dark so I could show you the lights. So these are the lights that I had fitted on there before. They're not terrible. They're actually pretty decent. We could do halos too. That actually looks pretty sick. With the blue halos. And now the LED bar. I have not mounted up the switch yet. I just have it under here. Check it out guys. So there is our plate. Came out pretty nice. The slotted holes actually kind of look like they're supposed to be like that. So first thing I'm gonna do is put our uh, fuel pack cock in place. Going to be going in like this. Snug fit in there. That's what she said. I'm gonna put some copper washers on this side. I'm gonna put some yam bond on our threads. I don't want any gas leaking out of this thing. I don't think it would, cause we have got that rubber gasket, but I figure it might as well Take the extra measure and tighten these down. There's no way this thing is leaking. All right, there it is. Looks pretty legit. If I didn't know any better, I might even think this is stock. I don't think this thing will ever leak. If it has to come off, it won't be that big of a deal. That RTV is soft, uh, but it looks pretty good and it's oriented pretty nicely. Once we get it on there, we'll know for sure. Show you guys how this thing sits. Looks pretty good. It's not like the most ergonomic, but it's just not going to be because I mean, it's an aftermarket thing. If I went completely sideways, it hit the fan and then the fuel line ran into the cylinder. You'd have to bend it. This flows really nice. Uh, it's not like the most optimal thing. <laughs> this super long line like that, but it does go below the tank. So, uh, because it's gravity fed, we should be okay. So that's what it looks like. Let's get some gas in there, fire it up. I don't see any leaks. Good. All right, I guess we'll try it. No choke first.
So it's cracking and popping, and it needed a choke to start. So I'm going to say that the pilot is lean. Uh, so I'm going to play around with the jets for a little bit. I did get it to idle um, a little bit just to get it nice and warm, uh, but it definitely needs some tuning. I, I can just tell, though, man, this thing is going to be super fast. Let me get it dialed in, and we'll take it for a spin. <laughs> See, we're at 100 degrees. Oh, dude. <laughs> I can feel already it's got a lot of power. Oh, yeah. Hopefully, we've got enough gas that we don't run out like I normally do. Sounds pretty good under consistent throttle. Right now we're at about quarter throttle. I've been messing with the jetting a little bit. So I have, as of now, I have a 178 main, um, a 52 pilot, and a CR40 needle. I don't even know if that's a real needle. That's what came in the carburetor. This exhaust is gnarly though, dude. This is loud. because somebody will call the police. Yeah, it's good, man. It's got a lot of top end, bro. Let me see if I can do like one good launch for you guys. This thing is gonna be a blast in the dunes. <laughs> Dude, the top end is crazy. All right, I gotta get out of here, man, before the cops come. But dude, this thing, I can't wait to get this <laughs> out in the open. The top end is where you really feel this thing. I can feel it um, in, the, in the basin. When you really wind out the gears, the front end just starts going, <laughs> like it just wants to keep going up. Really broad power range. Pretty stoked, dude. Certified ass dyno technician here. Let's get into it. Now before the mods we put on today, the power would come on very strong in the beginning and go up to a measly 40 horsepower. Stay around there and then start to drop off around 8,500 RPMs into nothing. You can see right here on this line, we were lucky if we were getting a measly 43 horsepower. Junk power, if you ask me. Oh, what the hell. Now that we've added the mods, the power comes on a little bit sooner and continues to raise throughout the power band, getting to an incredible 55 horsepower and then finally falling off around 11,000 RPMs. So there's your official ass sounder going from a junky 43 horsepower and a narrow power band that drops off way too early to a super broad power band hitting a whopping 58 horsepower. And that is your official ass dyno report. Dude, this thing looks absolutely sick. I cannot get over how good it looks with the edge paddles on there, man. The scat track edge on the rear, and then I have sand gear, um, like shark fin style fronts. Dude, I just think it looks so good, man. With the, I actually kind of like the look of the LED bar. You guys are gonna have to let me know what you think of that. Uh, definitely, I think it has that scrambler look from uh, the old school Polaris's, but I think it just looks like a Duner, dude. It just looks like it's made for the sand, man. This thing is screaming sand. Uh, the overall platform, um, like the stance I really like, we got the plus one full flight A-arms in the front with the rocket round suspension. In the back we are uh, plus one and a half 
with the TRX 450R hubs. They're a direct swap for the KFX 450R. If you guys didn't know, it adds uh, three quarters of an inch to each side. Uh, just a really nice stance. It handles really well. It's a very comfortable quad to ride. Now it's got a really good amount of power. Uh, definitely happy with the setup. I mean, this thing came a long way. Uh, if you guys followed the series, I actually got this quad. I bought it from Joe Newberry, uh, but this was a basket case. Uh, I picked it up for 1800 bucks. The motor was out of it uh, already in pieces and stuff. I forget exact, exactly what was wrong with it, uh, but essentially I restored the whole thing and um, want to give a huge shout out to all the companies that helped along the way. Uh, as far as the frame and everything, uh, we had Full Flight Racing came out and they made these custom plus one A-arms. They're uh, XC A-arms that they did, had not even developed at the time. And uh, I worked with them to develop these. So they're uh, nice plus one A-arms. You guys can check them out from fullflightracing.com if you want to get your own set. Rocket Ron hooked up the suspension. They are triple rates. Uh, the highest suspension package that uh, I believe he offers. The engine, uh, big thank you to BP Racing, hooking up the piston kit, the cams, uh, Rossi Air Exhaust, hooking up with the exhaust system. Just super awesome, man. I'm just stoked, dude. I can't wait to open this thing up. I think it needs a little bit more dialing in with the jetting. You can hear it's popping a little bit. I think it's a little bit on the lean side. I'll see you guys in the next video. And until then, peace out.